is Ricky from Ricky's Pretties and today I've got a fun little project for us to work on. We are going to do a Christmas in July project and we're going to be using this box that I got from Hobby Lobby and we're going to be using um, some Distrax Oxide probably. I'm not sure about that yet. And um, we're going to be using some Triple Thick, some glitter, Mod Podge. Um, we're going to be using some little appliques, some lace, some bling bling, and um, this little cameo here, and a little mulberry paper rose that I got. You're going to need some kind of tool. Um, I have a multi-tool here that has all kinds of things in it to where you can take the little screws off of this because we are going to be removing um, the hardware from this. And I've got some white paint. This is gesso. You can use any white paint you want. Um, you might need this for cutting a stem. Um, you'll need a pair of scissors, probably, maybe, I don't know. I can't find my fussy cut scissors. That's what I prefer, but I can't find what I did with them. So I'm going to be using these today. And that, you'll need some paint brushes, and that's pretty much about it. Glue gun, um, some E6000, which I've got right here somewhere. A little dauber for my Distress Oxide and some glue sticks. And um, with that, we will get started. First thing I'm going to do is remove the hardware from this box. And then I'm going to paint it white. So we're just going to go ahead and start doing this. While I do this, I will let you guys know that uh, the napkin I'm using today, the flowers, and pretty much all of the bling that I have over here, I got from my friend Debbie at Kiki Sale. I will put a link in the description box below for her site. Um, do make sure that you have a real profile, not a fake one, and that if you want to join, make sure you answer all of the questions because if you don't answer the questions, she's not going to let you in. She's going to think you're um, a, a fake profile or something. So just make sure you answer all of those questions and she will admit you into our fun little group. It's a craft sale group. She sells supplies on there and she gets us all kinds of neat things. Now she may not be able to get some of the things that I'm using today. I don't know for sure about that. Um, but She'll give us something similar um, if you request. If you have a special request, she does take requests. And she will try to find items for you if you have specific things that you want. And it may not be exactly like what I have, but she'll try to find something as similar as she can. Alright, there's one little thing down. I know for sure she's going to be getting more of these. And she can get some more of the chain usually. And she'll probably be able to get some more of these, maybe. I don't know for sure where she got those at, but she'll get us something similar. And if you can't find it on Kiki Sale, um, then, you know, you don't have to use the exact th same things that I'm using. You can go to thrift shops, which is a great place to find costume jewelry, brooches, necklaces, earrings. And you can tear those apart. You can use the parts from those to um, use on your projects. That's a great place to find things. Um, also, like those little dollar earring places, that's a good place. Those dollar jewelry places that they have around, that's a good place to look also. You can find all kinds of things at those places to tear apart. Estate sales, if they're selling, you know, if they've got costume jewelry, a lot of times garage sales is a better place than estate sales. Estate sales usually have pricier things, but garage sales are a great place to look for costume jewelry. Most people are able to get out and about these days now. Um, I know a lot of people probably weren't doing garage selling because of COVID, but, you know, a lot, it's getting better in a lot of places now and people are able to get out and about and if you can go to garage sales now if you feel comfortable doing that that's a great place to pick things up this little box that i'm taking apart right now it only costs like a dollar 99 at hobby lobby um they do have their wood craft supplies on sale for 40 percent off sometimes but you have to it, it's it's got a limitation of 5.99 and up on that so if you purchase this on there you will Pay $1.99 for it. You may be able to get these in bulk on Amazon. I don't know. I haven't tried to find it that way. So 
I usually just go and get one at Hobby Lobby when I want one. And I like working with these little boxes. Just make sure you try to find one that where the hardware is straight on it. A lot of times they'll, somebody has just put that together in a hurry and the hardware can be crooked on them sometimes. So just make sure, you know, to save yourself some uh, pains later that your hardware sits straight and that the box opens and shuts properly. That's something I always check for when picking these out. And we're getting there. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm kind of slow. I've got arthritis and my hands sometimes don't really want to work. If I had a bit small enough, I would be using my little Ryobi for this, but I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a, what do you call it? Can't even think. I don't have a, you know, a thingy. <laughs> I'll just call it a thingy. <laughs> I don't have a thingy to go on there that's this small so we're just doing it this way and it's taking a while I'm sorry and I'll just continue to work and we'll speed this up to make this process go a little faster how's that Okay guys, we are back and um, while I was off camera, I did go ahead and seal the inside and the lip of this with um, some water-based varnish. Um, this is what I use. I got it at Hobby Lobby. This is gloss. You can also get it in matte and it goes a long way. You just barely need a little bit of it. I did also go ahead and seal the perimeter of my lower half of my box and inside of this as well because I don't plan on lining this. And I decided I used that because um, the varnish dries in such a way that this box, whenever it's closed, it's not going to stick to itself. So that's why I elected to do that instead of going over that with Mod Podge because Mod Podge will stick to itself. Um, maybe after a couple of weeks it won't do that anymore, but the varnish definitely will not. I didn't really do anything to the bottom of the box because nobody's going to see that anyway. Um, so I elected not to do that. And on this... For the lid, on the inside of the lid, I'm going to go ahead and, and add a little bit of a design. So I'm going to go ahead and separate this napkin here. I've gone ahead and figured out where I want my images to be so that I could get this done a little faster. And I think this is a two-ply. I'm going to see here. Can't tell. Yeah, two ply, and I only want to use one. So carefully separate that out. And now I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to use a wet brush. I'm going to see what all I want. There's some of this that I don't think I'm going to use. I'm going to do this. And see how this fits. I want to be careful doing that so that you don't rip the part of the design that you want to keep.
All right, and then I'll go over a little bit more. You can see I'm being careful not to tear the leaves because I want to keep the leaves. I can. Let's see where we're at now. Um, so it still won't quite fit, so I'm going to go ahead and trim this leaf off. And around there. And then we'll see where we're at again. Make sure that these are towards you so that your when your box is closed, your design is facing the way that you want it to be facing. Which I think for me is going to be however I can get it in here. Okay, it almost fits. I'm going to have to cut this little bud, though, off of the top here, because that is not going to go. Goodbye, bud. Alright, now I think I can get that to fit. Maybe. Yeah, I think that just goes in there. Alrighty, so... I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to just use my small brush. Get me some Mod Podge. Just a thin amount. Take that down. Work from the center out. I'm not gonna bother with saran wrap for the inside of this. Cause it's such a tiny little space and I really don't think it's gonna matter much if it's wrinkled so far it is not. So I'm just gonna make sure that's down really good. Okay, and now I'm just going to go over the top of it with, not that one, this brush right here. From the center out. Okay, that's all coated, and I'm going to just set this aside um, to let that dry while we work on the next part. Okay, so this part is for the lid. I'm going to let that lid dry before I start that, so I'm just going to set that over here. Now, the next thing I want to work on is this lace, because I'm not going to be putting any napkin around this. I'm just going to go with the lace around the bottom, but this is too wide for my base. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the straight edge off and keep the rose part of this. So I'm just gonna kind of fussy cut around that so that it will fit my base. I've already pre-measured the length of this around the box just so I could save time on the video. I don't think you have to do every little thing on camera. You know, it's just kind of common sense. You're just going to measure your lace around the box and cut it. Oh, I'm just going 
going to go around this. Don't waste your scraps, guys. Keep your scraps. You can use your scraps if you want to watch my video on how to um, uh, on how to make your own textured paper. You can use these lace scraps in that particular project. You can also use lace scraps in your design on other Mod Podge projects where you want a shabby chic look. You can use up your lace scraps there too. There's a lot of different projects you can use lace scraps for, even if they're just very small like this one. You can use these scraps um, for snippet rolls, for journaling, you know, just a shabby chic journal page. You could glue that down on the edge of a journal page and that would look really good. So don't throw this stuff away. Keep it for other things. So I'm going to set that aside into my little scrap bowl that I have over here to the side. And now you see what I did. I just kind of trimmed around. I trimmed that hard edge off of there. And so I'm just going to go around. I'm going to start at the back. I just like to start on a back corner when I'm starting and finishing. That way you can't really tell, especially from the front where something starts and ends. So I'm going to start right there and I'm going to use my bigger brush for this and I'm just going to use Mod Podge to glue this down. I think that'll work just fine. There's a fuzzy on there. Let me get that off. I don't want it under my lace. Come on, fuzzy. It's not one to come off. Fuzzy Wuzzy is not one to come off there. Okay. Fuzzy Wuzzy was being a bear. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this part on here. You notice I didn't go all the way around. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it first. Then I'm going to do that back side. Make sure you get it on there straight. Well, that's not one to stick very good today. I might have to go ahead and use some regular glue on that. I'm going to see if I can do it this way. paint over it and get that stuck down good. This usually does pretty well. Okay, that's working a little bit better. brush it on and let it go through that lace so that it holds. This will dry clear. When you get in there on the edge, you want to make sure you get that off. You don't want your lid to stick down once you get it closed. And it will. Just gonna get that soaked all the way through your lace. This side I haven't painted yet, so I'm gonna go over it. Put a little thicker coat on it. Being careful about that edge up there and wrap this around. I think I just didn't get enough glue on it the first first round I did. No, I didn't cut it exactly 
perfect. So I'm just gonna trim that off and go over a little bit more with some glue, Mod Podge. This will work good if you just wanna mix um, three parts Elmer's glue with one part water. You can use that if you don't have Mod Podge. That works well for decoupage and gluing things down too. Okay, so I've got my lace on there where I want it. I want to make sure I remove any globs of glue. I don't want globs of glue sticking around, so make sure you remove those. And especially around the top there, I'm just going to get me a damp paper towel and go around the edge up here because I don't really want that Mod Podge on there. So if I got any on there, I want to get that off. Okay. So that is on there now. We're going to set that aside and let it dry. And we're going to turn our attention to our lid now. And for that, I have this napkin here. I did go ahead and trim it off so that I could center it where I want it to go and I've kind of predetermined that I think I would like for it to go about like this. So I'm going to go ahead and separate this out. I know I'm going to have some left over. That's okay. Because remember, we can use our scraps for something else. Nothing goes to waste. So, oops, I'm tearing it. Don't tear it, Rick. And I think, no, that didn't go through where I wanted it to. So, I think we're still good. Yay. Got to be careful with that spot, though. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. I'm going to try to tear my second layer from up here. This is always difficult to do, guys. But separating these layers is kind of tough sometimes. Okay, I think I got it. And we're just going to carefully, carefully, carefully peel this away. Because I don't want to tear that any more than I already did. Because I don't want to. Tear into my design. And I haven't yet. I just don't want to. This is being a little difficult to get off of here. Just where I went wrong a moment ago. Okay. So we're going to save those out for a later project. You can also use the backing of your napkin. So don't. worry about throwing that out. I think I'm actually, let's see. I kind of like how this is situated right here. So I think that's how I'm going to put that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of my Mod Podge. And I'm going to put this on, not too thick, not too thin. Make sure I get around this little ledge here on this box because I want it to stick down there too. I'm going to go around our edge. And I do have some saran wrap over here. We're going to use that. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and slip this on here. Try to center it where I want it. Which is pretty well right there. I do have a crease in that napkin right there. That is okay.
ahead and crease that down. I'm going to take my saran wrap and put that over. I'm not real worried about my corners right now, guys. I want to get this top smoothed down. And I want to get this into that groove right there. So I'm going to be doing that with the saran wrap so they don't tear my napkin. And I'm going to go around the sides. Smoothing this down. And I'm just going to kind of let the corners take care of themselves because they will. Okay, let me see what I've got now. All right, that looks pretty good. And smooth this side down a little bit more. Okay fingers be careful okay now I'm gonna trim around this just so I can get some of this bulk off of here you want to trim it long though don't trim it short trim it long we're just removing a little bit of the bulk So that we can work with it easier. I'm also going to trim the corners. I don't know if you like to see what I was doing. I was getting up close to my face and forgot. I forget about the camera sometimes. Y'all, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't get on frame. But if I did, this is what I'm doing. I'm trimming the corners here. And now we're going to go over the top and the sides of this and get it stuck down good. Okay, so top first. Again, make sure you get over that little ledge that's in your box. Don't let the glue pull up in there. But you do want to make sure that you have glue on it. Try not to get your finger stuck to your napkin because if you do, it's going to tear. Now we're going to go around the sides now. I'm just going to kind of glue my corner down just like I would a package to the side there. Don't worry about anything that's hanging off. We're going to trim that later. I'm going to trim that corner down a little bit more and then get it trimmed off. Okay. And I'm going to turn this best I can here. Ah. Tricky, tricky. I'm going to turn that corner to the side there, too. Okay. 
Okay. That's on there. We're just going to let that dry. I think I'm going to set it on top of this to do that because I don't want to stick to my table. And let's check on this. This is still dry. This is still needing to dry too. So I'm going to let this stuff dry. And once it gets all dry, then we will come back and do some more. Okay. See you in a minute. Welcome back, y'all. Hey, first of all, I have to apologize because I figured out that um, after reviewing that last segment that I was actually out of frame for a good bit of it. Um, and so I apologize for that. I will try to stay in frame. Um, I did what has messed me up as I've moved my the position that I usually have my camera in. I decided to mount a little um, cabinet thing on the wall and position it you know, directly above me um, and get it up. It used to be setting on something on my table, but that didn't work well when I was sanding things because it would shake the table and make it look like earthquake. So I moved it to the wall and so it's in a little different position now. So it's kind of tricking my brain. <laughs> so I will get it together y'all, I promise. Um, I'm going to try to stay in frame for the rest of the video for you guys. And um, our little box, everything is all pretty well dry now so we're gonna it's dry enough for us to work with it so that's what we're gonna do um, I am going to go ahead and see our little edge here we're gonna trim this off we may need to sand that so I have a little tiny piece of 500 grit sandpaper in case we need to do that and right now I'm just gonna go and trim around our little edge So far, so good. Well, this is the hard part right here. We're just going to try to tear that without running it. This little edge right here, where our hardware goes, that's not going to show, so I'm fine with that. And same thing for this. I'm just going to tear this one. Hardware goes there. I'm not really worried about that too much. Okay. So... We still have a little bit of an edge there, and I am going to go ahead and sand around this just a hair. Just to try to get it really even and smooth. So now on this side, you can really see what I was doing because I was off camera, but for, um, for the, the corners, I basically just kind of dog-eared it and tamped it down with the glue, kind of like you would a package, you know, fold over the corner and then seal it with tape. Instead of this, instead of tape, you just seal it down with the glue. And I did that on both, um, sides, not the front or the back. I didn't want those corners on the front so I folded them this way to the side. You might be able to see this one a little bit better. Dog-eared it and folded it in. And that worked out pretty good. So I don't think there's really a way to hide those corners unless you cut them off and then you've got you know the side of your box is going to show. It's not really going to matter with what we're going to do next anyway. So I think that will be fine. Right now I'm just kind of smoothing this down wherever we cut our edge off of our decoupage. All right. And I think that looks pretty good. This is our front. This is our back. 
And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and use some of our Distressed Oxide. I have not done this on a project like this before, so if it turns out looking ugly, oh well, just don't do it on yours. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. If you don't like it, don't do it. Uh, but I'm going to try it because I like things to look antique. And this looks a little too new for my taste, so I'm just going to do some Distressed Oxide on here. Just on the corners. This color is called Vintage Photo. We're just going to kind of make this box look a little older than it is. And I have to say, I kind of like it so far. So you can kind of see what I mean when I say our corners aren't really going to matter that much. Because we're going to do this. And you know, around where the hardware goes especially, I'm going to do that. Put some of that on here. Let's kind of make it look aged. A little up here in the corners too. This corner is not going to show that much, but we're going to put some on there anyway, just for, uh, just for the heck of it. Okay. Now I think that looks cool. I like it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. I'm just really going to go around the corners and maybe the feet of this a little bit. Just down here along the bottom edge. Just kind of give it an older antique -y look and I'm not rubbing really hard. You don't need to with this. You just need a little bit. Just just a little dab. A little dab will do ya. Just going to kind of go around the lower edge of this. Make it look older. Okay. A little bit up on these corners too. On the corners especially because that's where everything tends to get worn. There's where my sponge went. <laughs> okay. And I think that's all it's going to need. I think that looks cool. I like it. You might not like it. If you don't like it, don't do it to yours. But I love it. I think it looks neat. So I'm going to keep mine that way. Nothing I could do about it now anyhow if I wanted to change it. But I don't want to change it. I think it looks great. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and replace our hardware. I'm going to do that off camera to save time and then I will be back to show you what we're going to do next. Okay guys, we're back. Now it is the 4th of July so if you hear some firecrackers going off that's why it is the kids next door. So <laughs> bear with me through the fireworks and happy 4th to everyone. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like now that I've got the hardware back on. I'm going to give you a little close up. Hopefully you can see this box and just how pretty that looks. I don't know how well you can see that, but I hope you can because I think it looks just beautiful. I think that Distressed Oxide ink did a really good job of making that look antique and I love it. And the inside of the box is just as pretty. It looks great. And, but we've still got some stuff to do. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put some trim in this little groove here around the box. And I've got this wonderful little pink rhinestone and pearl trim that um, I got from Debbie. And so I'm gonna be putting some of this. It's gonna, it's so small that it's going to go right into that little groove and that's exactly where I want it to go. So first I'm going to kind of measure and I found out that this chain is better to be cut with scissors rather than wire cutters because wire cutters tends to break it. And so I'm going to measure it. Try to eyeball this here. It'll stay. I'm going to kind of measure it. Yeah, that's good. It'll go from here to here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that right there. Okay. 
perfect. And now for E6000, I'm going to just go ahead and put some E6000 on here. I hope it's not clogged up. I have a tendency to get it clogged up, and I don't think it is, so yay for me. I don't think I'm going to need hot glue to get this stuck down because it's very lightweight, so I'm just going to take my chances with just E6000. Plus, I'm only gluing on a strand at a time. And I do have a little bit of time to work with this before it sets. You want to make sure your silver side's down, that your chain is not turned. I'm going to get it on here first, and then I'm going to just slide it over and position it. Okay. And then just kind of gently tamp it down to make sure that it is set down in the glue. And that looks great. Okay. And I'm going to make sure, check my little edge, make sure I don't have anything sticking up. And evenly. And that looks Fantastico. So now I'm going to go ahead and measure my next little section here. And I'm going to go from this edge where I just glued that to this edge here. I'm going to stop with a little pearl. Very carefully cut that. Check to make sure that our chain has not moved. It did a little bit, so I push it, positioned it back. Okay, and now we're just going to go ahead and add some of this. And we'll keep going like this until we get our chain all the way around our box.
Okay guys, that looks pretty good. And um, so now we're going to go ahead and continue with our next step. I'm gonna save this because I might wanna put that somewhere. I don't know, it's a little, I think I'll just kind of set it over here so it doesn't get lost. And so next, I am going to go ahead and add our Rose Cameo. And I'm going to put that right here. But before I put that on there, I'm going to measure around that with our chain because I want to put some of that around our cameo as well. Just to kind of dress it up. Make sure that your chain is right side up when you're measuring because if it's not, you may get the wrong measurement because it'll be twisted. I think it's going to end right there with that rhinestone. So I'm going to cut it right here. All right. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to go ahead and position my cameo in the center here. Off to the side because I'm going to be putting some other things over here. So um, I'm going to just place that about right here. I'm going to use both E6000. We're going to set this aside because we're pretty much done with that. I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue to place this cameo so that it doesn't move. I'm going to just go ahead and put a little E6000 around. I don't want it squishing out on me. If I can keep it from that, I like to keep it from being too messy. So I'm just gonna kind of spread it with my fingers out a little bit. And then I'm gonna place a dab of hot glue on my box. I'm going to set my cameo down, make sure it's straight and squish it down. Yep, that's exactly where I want it. And I'm just going to hold it in place until this hot glue sets because I don't want it to move on me. All right, I think that's probably good. I think that looks pretty. How about you? And then next, I'm going to go ahead and just with the E6000, I'm going to go around and place this chain. And since this is the front of the box, I don't really want to start at the bottom. I'm going to start at the top with the chain. But I'm really just going to try to put this just right around the edge here and I don't want to overdo it I don't want to make a big mess with this glue so I'm just trying to go just kind of around the edge of this cameo carefully hopefully without making a big mess I don't think I've made a big mess but that's okay it's not going to show. It is clear. Make sure you're using clear E6000 in case you make a mess. Because if you don't, it will show. Make sure that your chain is facing upwards. And I'm just going to kind of go around. This chain likes to turn, so keep, you know, especially when you're putting it up against something round like this. So. Make sure you keep it turned the right way. Push it up against the side of the cameo, but don't let it roll on you. Because it is going to try to do that. You don't really want your silver sticking up. You want to be able to see your rhinestones and your pearls. Uh, 
And I did get that a little bit short. I think I got a one or two short. That is okay. Because guess what? I've got this little guy over here. Let's see, what can I use? See, I got, let's see. At the end of this paintbrush, I'm going to just use that to dab a little bit of that glue into that space. And I'm going to put our little rhinestone there. Hopefully he lands right side up. And this is kind of hard to do. I have a dabber, but I'm trying not to get up and get that. All right, now we just need a little pearly to go there. So I'm going to cut a pearl off of here. Just one little pearl. <laughs> They're so tiny. And he landed on his side. Let's flip him right, right side up. He keeps going everywhere, but the way that I want him to go, now he's right side up. And we're just going to slide him on in there. And stick him in place. All right, okay, so that looks good. I like it. Nothing wrong with that, guys. So you can't even tell that I sealed up that hole with a little, with, with a couple of little bits and pieces parts. Okay, so now then, if you have a string, wait till it's dry. You can pull it off after it's dry, which I'm not doing, I'm impatient. <laughs> But anyways, that looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and do our other bling. First thing I'm going to do is place this flower. Now, if y'all don't think that uh, roses and Christmas go together, you don't have to do roses and Christmas. You can do whatever you want. But I happen to think that they do. Especially if you've ever been out in California where everything's growing, including the poinsettias. Uh depending on what region you're in, roses can most definitely go with Christmas. And especially the red roses, I think, are really pretty at Christmas time. So, yeah, there's that. And that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this rose down with some E6000. And I am going to put a little bit under these leaves because that'll just wanting to be contrary but that'll help this flower stick down and I'm sorry if I got off camera I just put glue on it that's all I did and I'm gonna put some glue right here in the middle of this flower and then I'm just going to stick it down right there on the corner okay all right next I have this snowflake it's really pretty and I want to stick it right in here I'm just going to tuck that under the rose just a little bit. So again, with the E6000, don't overdo it. A little bit will hold. And right in the middle, I'm going to put a dot of glue. I'm going to stick my pointy end in there and just kind of tuck it up under that flower and hold it till it gets set. I've got two of these, so I don't know if I'm going to use the extra one I have or not. Um, I might. We'll see how this turns out. I might like it, actually, to go right there. Oops. 
just to kind of layer up over that. I think that'll be pretty. So yeah, I'm probably going to use both of these. All right, so I'm going to stick this little guy right there in the tuck of that um, snowflake. Put a dab of hot glue. And stick it on there. And I'm going to hold it so that it doesn't move. Because I don't want it to move. It is kind of in an angle, so I don't want it to come off of there. I might just stick me another little dab of this down under there just to hold it for sure. Once that E6000 sets, it's not going to go anywhere. But I just don't want it to go anywhere right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down good with that. Alright, and I know I want this poinsettia to go up here. Now these little petals move. It's on this little wheel and these petals will move. Which I think is kind of cool. I'm not going to glue them in place because I like it. I think it's cool. So I'm just going to go around this with the E6000. I'm going to put a dot of glue where I want it on my box. Try to get that tucked in there and stick it down. And hold it in place until it dries. Don't touch your glue gun, guys. That hurts. <laughs> it smarts. And our other little pun said he is going to go right in here. Well, that's going to set at an angle too, so... I'm going to kind of put it right there. I think it will be pretty. Yeah. Okay, so E6000. Hot glue. And in you go. Perfect. Okay, I love that so far. I think that is gorgeous. See, I've got a glue string. Let's get that off of there. Okay. I love that. I think it's beautiful. So another glue string. Ah, I don't like glue strings. That's pretty, pretty. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use some of our appliques that we have. And I'm going to put those here, here. I'm going to put those in the in each corner. I think will be cute. And this is just the way I want to do mine. You don't have to do yours this way. You can do yours any way you want. If you think I'm getting too much on here, then don't put as much on yours. This is just an idea that I have for this box. And I think it's a good one. I think it's really pretty. I might even put one up here. I'm not sure if I want to put one up there or not. I'm going to get these on here, and then I'm going to see if I want to do that or not. So, a little E6000. Make sure these do have a right side and a wrong side. So, make sure you've got yours right side up. It's going to put that in this corner here. Next one. I'm 
But then this corner, I'm not trying to get them on there exactly the same. I just want to put them, you know, pretty much where I think they need to go. And I'm going to do the same thing to the back. Again, just make sure you're not attaching them wrong side up. You'll have a heck of a time getting it off there to reset it if you do so. Just make sure you're putting it on correctly. Now I've seen these little doodads on our um on a trim piece before too and you can cut these apart and use them if you find these little rosettes on a trim you can cut them up and use them or you could go around your whole entire box with it if you wanted to and I don't know do I want to put do I want to put one here I don't know I think that might be a little bit much to do it there because it's already got quite a bit going on I think I like it exactly like it is. Do I want to put one of these up here or no? Actually, I don't. I think it looks good the way it is. Now, what I do want to do, though, is I want to dress up my rose just a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some triple thick. Triple thick. Let's put our cap on our glue. I'm really bad about that. It dries out. Okay, so we are going to do, I'm going to do some glitter, and I'm just going to shake that out in my little tub here. We're not going to use a ton of it, but I want to use a little. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and get out some triple thick. And I'm going to get my little brush. And I'm going to go over my little rose petals with this. Because they are paper. And this kind of gives them a little bit of extra body and oomph too. Because we're going to put glitter on them. <laughs> glitter! We love glitter, don't we? Yes, we do. All crafters love glitter. Now you could use glass glitter for this. I stopped using it. I got this uh, Spectra glitter on Amazon because it looks similar to German glitter glass. I I kept getting it in the floor and ramming it into my heels and my feet whenever I was walking around. So I stopped using the German glass glitter because it is glass. And I am not neat. I am messy and I kept getting it everywhere so I don't use that. But I think this works really well. So since Christmas is kind of a winter time thing, and this is Christmas in July, I'm going to put some Frosties on our roses. And I think I'm going to do a little bit here in the corners of this box. Just add a little bit of glitter here and there. Just to kind of dress that up a little bit. Sprinkle it around. Shake, shake, shake it off. Now that is really pretty. I love that. I hope you can see how nice and sparkly that is. I think it's gorgeous. Okay, and I would like to also go around my little rosebuds too. Because they're soft. I'm not going to put glitter on those. Um, but I am just going to kind of go over them with the triple thick to help protect them from getting dirty in the future because, like I said, they are cloth. They are made out of floss, uh, embroidery floss. So it looks like it's made out of. And so I'm just going to put this on to kind of protect it. Once it dries, those aren't going to be able to get dirty. And this dries clear, so it's not going to really hurt it any at all to be on there. Ugh. 
it's just what I like to do. You don't have to do that if you don't want to do it. But this is my project. This is what I like to do. And so you do you and I'll do me. And use this as an example to fuel your own creativity. Get your mind going in different directions and create something of your own. Okay, guys, I think that is it. Our box is complete. I love this little Christmas in July box. And um, just so you know, you can make a box like this for a birthday or just any occasion. And I mean, it would even be really nice to um, use it for, you could use it for happy mail even. I mean, if you want to make somebody's day, if you have a fellow crafter that wants some uh, crafting supplies, I mean, you could make that person's day so easy. Um, I have some things sitting over here. Yeah, here it is. I'm, no, I'm making noise. But, I mean, like, you could just... Yeah, I know this is still wet, so I don't want to do too much to it. But you could just, I mean, you could pack this full of stuff. You can put... Uh, little beads in here. You could fold up some lace and stick that in there with some trim. You could put this trim in here. My friend Debbie also sells these little angel angel cards. Um, they come cut up, but and these are these come in different sizes. But these are great for people who like to do paper crafting. I mean, these would be great to put on a paper clip for your journals. Um, you could decorate tags with these. You can decorate these boxes with these. I mean, these these will you can do anything with these. You can put these on wine bottles, candle holders, whatever you want to do with these pictures. You can get them in different sizes. So this would be a great gift. You know, a little happy gift for a crafter. You could stick that inside there. You can stick some of these inside there and just load this little box up just as full as you can get it and close it up. And then mail it to your, I don't think I got that. Yeah, it's in the way of the hinge. So close it up and then send it to your little friends for happy mail. Yeah, that, box, that bag's not want to tuck down in there. Uh -huh. But yeah, there you go, see? And yeah, load that up, put some beads in there, put some lace, some little ribbon, whatever you've got. Stick that in there and send it to your friend, your little crafty and crime buddy and send it for happy mail or I mean this this is a great box in itself you know to give somebody as a Christmas gift um, but you can put another gift inside the box and use this as 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 not only the box that you're giving it in but also as the gift itself you can put a pair of earrings in here and a necklace uh, little bits of jewelry just just something small you can put in here and give this to somebody for Christmas. So this is great project for Christmas in July. It's an anytime project. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I will take some photos of it, post it at the end. And if you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I see another glue string. Oh. Um, I'm going to clean this up and post some pictures. And then, um, like I said, if you like this channel, if you like what I did today, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and all that good old stuff. Okay, y'all, I will see y'all next time, and we'll do something fun, okay? Thank you for joining me today. Have a good weekend, and happy 4th.